Hello, I'm Tom Coughlin. I'm the president of Coughlin Associates, and I'm glad to be speaking here at the 2020 Flash Memory Summit. Coughlin Associates is my company. Uh, we've been doing consulting for over 20 years now in digital storage and memory and their applications, various types of uh, work. We also um, write things. I have a blog I do on storage and memory at Forbes.com and other uh, websites as well. Uh, publish reports on digital storage uh, and memory technologies and their applications. And in fact, one of those will be the basis of much of the material I will present today. Um, and I also have been putting on uh, storage and memory oriented events, including the Storage Visions Conference, the Creative Storage Conference, um, and other events as well. And in fact, I was general chair of the Flash Memory Summit for 10 years. Today, I'm going to talk to you about resistive random access memory and the situation today and what's going on with this memory technology. Here's an outline of my talk. We'll talk first on the properties of various emerging memories, including resistive RAM. We'll talk about some company announcements uh, regarding resistive RAM memory. We'll talk about the technologies themselves because resistive RAM is a term that actually inc incorporates a number of different memory technologies. Um, then we'll talk about some advantages um, of resistive RAM as well as the operation and construction of resistive RAM memory devices, some applications for resistive RAM. And then because TSMC, a major foundry, has been uh, uh, promising uh, to, to come out with resistive RAM products this year, uh, we'll talk a bit about uh, recent uh, updates that they have looked at, uh, worked on. And finally, we'll end up with a summary. So let's do a comparison of various solid state memory technologies. If you look at this table here, it's from uh, the report that uh, Jim Handy and I have done on uh, emerging memory technologies. Emerging memories find their direction. And uh, we have here on the left-hand side, some established memory types, including static random access memory, dynamic random access memory, nor flash and NAND. So these are in higher volume production. And then more emerging memory types on the right-hand side here, which are um, in lower levels of production, or in some cases, uh, perhaps uh, still uh, in uh, uh, pre-production or very low volumes uh, products. Now these are both standalone as well as embedded memory products potentially, as are some of these established memory types. And the emerging memories we're talking about are ferroelectric random access memory, FRAM, resistive random access memory, which is initialed as RE-RAM or RRAM, um, a type of uh, magnetic random access memory called a toggle mode, uh, another type of magnetic random access memory called spin tunnel torque MRAM, and then phase change memory. And this last one actually is, uh, uh, there's a product called 3D crosspoint memory, which Intel and Micron developed, which currently is being sold by Intel as their Optane uh, memory technology, both in SSDs and in DIMM memory modules. And you can see some various properties about uh, these uh, established memory types and the non-volatile memory types. Um, the non-volatility, that is, does the data stay on when the power is off, the size of the cells, the read time, the write time, endurance, the number of times the, the memory can be rewritten, uh, how much energy is being used to write, and also what kind of voltages are required for writing. And you can see some comparisons here between these established memory types and emerging memory types. So there's issues on these established memory types, SRAM, um, is a fairly large, takes up a lot of real estate for a, a memory cell. Uh, DRAM is, is uh, totally non-volatile, has to be refreshed uh, fairly often, uses a fair amount of energy. Uh, NOR flash uh, is perhaps reaching a limit, uh, seems to be reached limits in its uh, how uh, much you can scale it, uh, less than 28 nanometers. And NAND flash, of course, which is uh, the major uh, non-volatile memory technology used in SSDs. And, uh, and we'll compare those, and, and these can be compared then to the emerging memory types. Um, you can see there's various advantages there, and resistive memory um, promises fairly low uh, sized uh, cells. Uh, that means you get high density, pretty good read speeds. Uh, write time is, is, is pretty quick, and uh, it also can have uh, reasonable endurances for some applications, and uh, write energies are low. So there's some good things about resistive RAM, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Let's look at some of the companies, in fact, that have been uh, promoting resistive RAM memories. There's a company called Crossbar, which in uh, 2016 uh, announced a partnership with Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, which is another major foundry, to co-develop and produce resistive RAM technologies for use in 
uh, MCUs, um, system on chips for IoT, consumer electronics, artificial intelligence, and industrial applications. They developed their own, uh, Crossbar has developed its own uh, resistive memory technology, which they believe they can build uh, uh, Crossbar structures with, and therefore get uh, multiple layers of memory cells. However, to date, no actual products from Crossbar or SMIC with resistive RAM have been reported. Another case is uh, Panasonic. Um, in 2017, Panasonic announced a partnership with United Metro Microelectronics Corporation, UMC, which is another, um, uh, uh, another one of these uh, semiconductor foundries to co-develop and produce resistive RAM devices initially with a 40 nanometer process, which in 2017 wasn't too bad. Products are supposed to be ramping in 2019 for microcontrollers, but again, no products have been reported to date. Um, in, another case is TSMC, which I hinted at before, and I'll be talking about a bit more later. Um, at a technology events in August of, of this year, TSMC said that it is offering resistive RAM embedded non-volatile memory on its 40 nanometer and 22 nanometer manufacturing processes. The company said that multiple customers would tape out ICs with embedded resistive RAM in the second half of 2020. They indicated that Infineon Technologies AG has adopted resistive RAM for certain specialized microcontrollers for the memory and microcontrollers. So it seems like the, the biggest uh, uh, progress uh, possibility for a uh, product soon seems to be coming from TSMC. Now, another company uh, which actually uh, has been making standalone products uh, is Adesto, which is, uh, was acquired by a Dialog Semiconductor uh, that uh, acquisition finished in June of 2020. They have been shipping uh, their CD RAM, which is a resistive RAM uh, technology, as standalone memory chips for several years. In October of 2020, Dialog Semi said that they would license, uh, this is supposed to be the C, uh, CD RAM memory technology to Global Foundries, another uh, foundry company, semiconductor foundry company, which also has a deal with Everspin licensing their MRAM technology. And Global Foundries will first offer Dialog's CB RAM as an embedded non-volatile memory option on its 22 FDX platform with the plan to extend to other platforms. Now let's talk about some of the different uh, resistive RAM technologies that are out there. And there are several. And in a sense, you could, you could say that many of the other memories, which have different names, are their memory uh, is by cha uh, changing the resistance of the memory cell. For instance, MRAM basically changes the memory cell resistance um, as, a, as a way of storing information. So, uh, but this is a particular set of, the ones we're going to be calling resistive RAM here are a particular set of technologies, one of which is uh, the uh, filament devices. So there's two basic types of resistive RAM technologies, um, although we are going to talk about another, te another technology as well. Um, the first is metal filament resistive RAMs, and they function through the formation or dissolution of a metal metallic filament or nanobridge in a conductive electrolytes using electrochemistry. In the second type, the binary oxide device, conduction is caused by a reversible filament formation involving oxidation and reduction. A subset of this mechanism, referred to as interfacial switching, is caused by oxygen vacancy drift diffusion that induces barrier modulation. The metal filament uh, resistive rams, as shown here, switches through the formation of a conductive filament. The filament composition is metallic or has near metallic conductivity. It's often referred to as a conducting bridge device. This, this figure in the and the slide here shows the method for this formation growth and modulation by an applied voltage. A current control during the filament forming and during the set process determines the filament size as well as the diameter, and therefore the operational characteristics of this resistive RAM device. Write currents on the order of 20 to 100 microamperes have been reported. Test results of resistive RAM arrays indicate switching times in the order of 10 nanoseconds and endurance of 10 to the fifth to 10 to the sixth cycles. A significant advantage over flash, whose programming erase times takes tens of milliseconds, which can only endure 10 to the second or 10 to the fifth cycles. So this is uh, a better resist, uh, endurance than NAND flash. Um, another type of uh, resistive RAM device is uh, 
consists of two metal electrodes um, between which a unique solid dielectric or electrolyte is dispersed. This dielectric material is usually a transition metal oxide. Shown here, it's, tantal it's a tantalum oxide. Dielectric materials that have been used are titanium oxide, uh, nickel oxide, hafnium oxide, tungsten oxide, tantalum oxide, vanadium oxide, and copper oxide, as well as several others. The top and bottom electrodes are made out of platinum, uh, titanium, uh, titanium nitride, ruthenium, or nickel. And a wide variety of combinations of these electrodes and, elect and dielectrics is reported in the literature. However, the use of a titanium nitride bottom electrode in hafnium oxide dielectric is considered an attractive configuration of a simple uh, material system that yields good switching characteristics. This type is typically referred to as an oxygen vacancy type resistive RAM device. In this figure, two layers are positioned between two electrodes. Uh, the lower one is of uh, uh, tantalum oxide uh, and the upper one of uh, uh, tantalum two oxide five minus delta. The binary oxide resistive RAM device largely consists of oxygen va vacancy technologies. The fundamental switching mechanism for oxygen vacancy resistive RAM also involves the formation of a filament. But this filament consists of oxygen vacancies within the dielectric between the metal electrodes that results from the application of a higher set or resist voltage. A very small gap exists between the filament and top electrode and filament conduction to the top electrode has been postulated to be due to tunneling through the dielectric. Performance of this type of resistive RAM is thought to depend on a type of electron flow rather than ionic current conduction after filament formation. And this allows the technology to attain switching speeds equivalent to or better than flash memory and much lower write currents. Another approach to resistive memory is called CE-RAM for correlated electron random access memory. It was pioneered by a company called Symmetrix, uh, which is a ferroelectric intellectual property development company. CE-RAM uses similar materials to a resistive RAM but employs a much thinner transition metal oxide layer, as you can see here, to convert the material's operation from a filamentary to a phase transition memory. Rather than using oxygen diffusion to rupture and reform filaments, the technology uses a, what's called a MOT charge transfer phase transition to create conductive and insulating states. The company says that this creates a more stable and repeatable memory element with all the other benefits of certain resistive RAMs, including the use of silicon-friendly materials. In October of 2020, ARM, which had acquired the Symmetrix CE RAM IP, transferred that IP portfolio and related patents to a new spin-out from the company, Surf Labs, headquartered in Austin, Texas, and took a minor minority ownership stake in the new company. Now, Surf Labs, uh, again, was a uh, uh, was uh, recently announced as uh, uh, taking the CE uh, uh, RAM uh, technology. And as part of the spin out, uh, ARM transferred uh, its, its IP portfolio, more than 150 patents to Surf Labs, which would be the foundation of a roadmap uh, for related CE RAM technologies. The initial focus will be on producing meaningful prototypes, which will be licensed to partners with the goal of accelerating timing to enable those novel uh, non-volatile materials for uh, systems applications. Now, we talked a bit about some of the companies that are out there. Now, let's talk about uh, the operation of resistive RAM itself. Um, and one of the things about resistive RAM is, that's really interesting is the scaling. Um, reducing the scale of resistive RAM cell is believed to actually increase the on and off resistance ratio due to the fact that the on current, the current flowing through the metallic filaments does not shrink with scaling while the off current, that is the cell's leakage current, which is the function of the cell area, decreases as the cell size shrinks. That means that resistive RAM device characteristics should improve as the device is scaled. In other words, the resistance uh, difference between the on and off state gets larger, as you can see in this, uh, the chart shown here. This scaling effect is expected to enable even further cost reductions since the increased read margins allow multiple bit levels to be stored in each cell the same way as is currently done in MLC and TLC and nowadays even QLC flash memory. This figure shows the scaling of resistance with cell size. Resistive RAM 
is estimated to be scalable below 10 nanometer process that rules. Today's write currents for a metal filament resistive RAM is at least 10x higher than flash, 20 milliamperes versus two microamperes. Although uh, time, write time is less than 10 nanoseconds compared with about 15 milliseconds for flash <clears throat> or 5 million times shorter. Filamentary resistive RAM poses unique manufacturing challenges. The cell resistance has an inherent variability that is proving difficult to manage using today's wafer processing techniques. <coughs> Additionally, the calcogenide glasses used in some of these technologies are difficult to integrate into a standard CMOS process. Um, here we're showing a little bit about the operation uh, of uh, these devices here. You can see the basic device, the top electrode, a bottle electrode, and a metal oxide between them. This is the oxide type. The current levels of voltages required for resistive RAM switching are generally shown in the figure here on the right hand side. For either metal bridge or oxygen vacancy resistive RAMs, the bit cell consists of a resistive RAM structure deposited above the select device at the back end of the line, and the cell dimensions will be determined by the resistive RAM or select device, whichever is larger. Now the select device uh, keeps uh, the current from this device from leaking over into other memory cells. It's a, so it serves a very important function. So uh, here's how, uh, looking a bit at how resistive RAM is integrated into CMOS. In one technique uh, for resistive RAM CMOS integration, resistive RAM layers are deposited on top of the pre-processed CMOS logic wafers, which you can see uh, shown here. The resistive RAM cell is added between two of the metal layers that are deposited in the later, <clears throat> in the later back end, that's the top part, of the wafer processing. This approach is illustrated in this image. Uh, the process can be achieved with a very small number of additional mask steps. Um, Modesto, for instance, claims that its embedded resistive RAM process can be built using no more than a single mask at upper metal layers and with only two masks at the first lowest metal layer. Um, here's a two mask resistive uh, RAM fill, uh, element in, a tungs in tungsten vias, for example. Um, this image illustrates conventional tungsten contact at the right and a simple uh, CBRAM, conductive bridge random access memory bit, memory bit cell inserted within that, con that, uh, inserted within that contact on the left. So you see a regular uh, V on the right and then the uh, MRAM uh, inserted on the left. According to Odesto, this memory element can be produced using only one or two mask layers reducing the overall cost of the wafer when compared to the higher mass count required, for instance, by NOR flash. The embedded photograph that you see in the middle um, is the same structure when seen through a tunneling electron microscope. So uh, Adesto says this, uh, this technology then can be easily integrated into a CMOS logic process because it resembles the construction of a standard metal insulator metal uh, capacitor that is widely used to make tiny capacitors and back-end foundry processes. The process thermal processes thermal budget is also said to be more amenable to CMOS logic uh, than are either MRAM or FRAM. That's the ferroelectric RAM. Now let's look at some of the ways in which uh, people are talking about using 3D RAM. This is a, a 3D uh, structure, uh, which is uh, using techniques similar to what we're doing at 3D NAND uh, to other memory types to drive up chip densities and substantially reduce costs. A diode selector uh, resistive RAM like flash memory can be built as a 3D uh, to help build the 3D memory devices shown here. In this design, multiple layers of memory share the same set of lithography steps to significantly reduce processing costs. If a 30 layer structure could be made, an 8F squared footprint would be reduced to an effective cell size of 0.25F squared. This 3D design uses the internal selection mechanism of the crossbar memory to allow multiple devices to share a transistor selector. Now here's a, a staff cross point array uh, design here. Um, since resistive RAMs are set and cleared by using currents in opposite directions, many are controlled by a bidirectional diode selector. Uh, this figure shows a resistive RAM stack cross point array with such a selector. First, in the unselected state, each cell must be stable during the total operation. As a programming voltage is applied to a specific word line, a half-select voltage is applied to the adjacent uh, word lines. 
This half select voltage helps maintain stability for millions of successful read write cycles. In the selected state for read and write, the desired current or pulse passes through a specific device only. The most promising resistive RAM structures involve multi-film diodes using compatible materials or other two terminal selector types as an integral part of the unit cell in order to eliminate the requirement for a larger selector, such as a transistor, which would then make the memory cells much larger. Considerable development work is being directed to implementing the space efficient structure. And without this advanced resistive RAM density potential is no, probably no better than existing technologies that use a transistor as a select device. Now here's some interesting examples here. Uh, while most resistive uh, RAMs use a diode or bidirectional diode selector, one company's product stands apart from others because it does not need a selector. Uh, this is crossbar technology, cross technologies that develop the metal filament cell that performs like both a memory bit and as a diode. Uh, during programming, the crossbar cell does not form a complete metal filament, but the filament comes within a few atoms of bridging the gap. When a forward read current is applied, the bridge is completed and the cell exhibits a low resistance. But when the current is removed, the last two atoms again disappear. If a reverse current is applied, the gap causes the cell to be in a high resistance state. So it acts as its own diode. Uh, the crossbar cell requires a specific voltage range for programming that is greater than plus or minus one volt. Programming is only possible for voltage levels beyond this range. Care must be taken not to exceed the breakdown voltage of the oxide insulator or medium. This topology is not yet in production. The company is ramping its resistive RAM into volume by first using a more conventional 1T1R cell structure with a self-selecting memory to ramp after the basic technology has reached volume. The 1T1R cell is aimed at embedded memories and SOCs, while the self-selecting cell will be used in a 1R, uh, 1TNR configuration for the large memory arrays found in standalone memory chips. In the quest to improve the bit capacity per chip, as well as to minimize space requirements, the 3D RAM structure and technology is being actively pursued by many developers. It is estimated uh, that a 3D RAM non-volatile technology would have an estimated greater than one terabyte on a single chip with existing lithographies, better specifications than flash, about 100x lower latency, 20 times faster writes, small pages, and no block erase requirements, 20 times lower power per bit, and manufacturing using uh, fully compatible as an addition to CMOS processing, and scalable to higher densities and capacity. And with the use of a 3D uh, resistive RAM, a high capacity, dense, low latency, non-volatile memory uh, is possible that is fully compatible with the CMOS standard manufacturing process. And that's what, uh, what uh, would be shown in this figure. Now, another interesting thing uh, about these uh, uh, resistive memory technologies, and in fact, uh, the lar in the larger scale, uh, resistive RAM, as well as phase change, what's called phase change memory, is that they're being extensively investigated for use in artificial intelligence applications. In particular, um, they use themselves, uh, they lend themselves to use in linear weighting configurations in an architecture commonly called a neural network or neural, and used in neuromorphic computing. Uh, neural networks are a very simple, simplified type of inference engine that can perform an enormous amount of math at low precision in a very short time. A simplistic view of a neural network appears here. And here's a, uh, uh, an article on the right-hand side that uh, happened recently uh, that was uh, uh, covering uh, uh, using resist, in this case, the resistive RAM material, they called it Memristor uh, for neuromorphic computing. Now we talked a bit about uh, uh, company announcements. We talked about the operation, various types of resistive RAM. Uh, we indicated uh, uh, how these are being integrated and potentially used. And TSMC though, I think deserves some particular attention here. Um, in a uh, uh, recent, uh, uh, recent uh, technology seminar that they did in, uh, in uh, late August, uh, they talked about the use of resistive RAM. Uh, in fact, you can see it as part of uh, their technology or their integrated specialty technology platform uh, for uh, system level solutions under NVM, non-volatile memory. Um, it includes uh, traditional uh, NOR flash, uh, but it also includes MRAM and resistive RAM. And uh, in particular, let's look at uh, the way they're using this there. They said that their 20, 40 and 22 nanometer resistive RAM is ready for production. 
e it's a e flash alternative for IoT and smart card. Um, and, ex and those that can replace NOR flash and extends to support uh, 10 year retention at 125 degrees after 10,000 cycles. So this has to do with that uh, higher endurance. Um, and they said that there'd be multiple customers which would do tape outs in the second half of 20 of 2020, which means that products, initial uh, products could be available uh, by sometime in early 2021. Uh, they also uh, talk about MRAM, um, which is not, of course, the major topic of this talk. Uh, 22 nanometer MRAM is ready for production, automotive qualification in uh, Q4 2020. Uh, 16 MRAM targets risk production for E-Flash like uh, in the uh, fourth quarter of 2021 and RAM like in the fourth quarter of, uh, of 2022. That's DRAM like. And in fact, uh, there are currently some products that uh, have been announced uh, that are used for, that are manufactured in TSMC's foundry uh, for, for instance, AI applications with MRAM. As we indicated before, apparently Infineon uh, is looking at microprocessor applications using uh, uh, TSMC's resistive RAM. So uh, part of their announcement, they talked about a bipolar CMOS, uh, DMOS, uh, BCD, they call it in their power management process and power management and uh, use in power management integrated circuits where the resistive RAM is used as a, uh, as a non-volatile memory. And you can see that uh, uh, they show this on a roadmap here with a, a 40 nanometer process, uh, a 12 volts, 28 volts with resistive RAM. Um, they've got various applications that they show, they show here, including uh, automotive and uh, 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 consumer applications. Um, also, uh, here's another picture of this uh, uh, power management integrated circuit technology platform. You can see the resistive RAM uh, shown here with uh, other uh, parts of the technology. Um, you know, the so target application, the higher digital content, and they re again, they re incorporate the resistive RAM for their embedded non-volatile memory. So in summary, resistive RAM technologies have long been available in discrete memories, companies such as Adesto. A resistive RAM has advantages in scaling versus other memories such as NAND flash. And there's been even talk that when NAND flash does run out of gas in terms of uh, 3D stacking and lith lithographic dimensions that uh, uh, resistive RAM may be its replacement memory because it can scale lower in terms of lithographic dimensions. And although it appears to be lagging MRAM and embedded applications, recent announcements indicate that resistive RAM will be used soon in several embedded applications for consumer, industrial, and other uses. And uh, just like to uh, draw your attention, uh, a lot of the material from this, uh, from this presentation came from a report from the Jim Handy of Objective Analysis and Coffin Associates did, um, which is uh, Emerging Memories Find Their Direction, describes the entire emerging memory ecosystem, uh, the technologies, phase change memory, resistive RAM, magnetic random access memory and ferroelectric uh, memories, among others, uh, talks about the companies, the markets, support requirements, and our forecasts uh, examine emerging memory consumption embedded as well as discrete, uh, and the capital equipment, for instance, required uh, to manufacture MRAM uh, to meet, those re to meet the, the, the anticipated demand. It's a 201 page report with 31 tables and 142 figures. And if you're interested to learn more, you can check out the URLs at the bottom of this slide. So with that, I'd like to thank you for my talk and uh, I hope that it's been useful to you.